Hola, eh, bienvenidos eh, al segundo panel del día de hoy, lunes eh, 23 de noviembre del mes del diseño. Eh, voy a, a comentar nuevamente que estamos en la novena versión del mes, es una actividad que se realiza anualmente y consiste en una agenda integrada de eventos culturales y educacionales con el fin de promover y posicionar el diseño como un eje fundamental en las economías creativas, la sociedad, la cultura y el patrimonio. Eh, en este panel que tenemos eh, en este minuto, es una clase magistral y un conversatorio que está relacionado con las políticas de diseño en Dinamarca. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué Dinamarca? Nosotros tenemos nuestro tema central de hoy, que es diseñar hoy. ¿Qué es diseñar sobre el contexto en el que estamos eh, viviendo hoy en día en relación a los cambios globales, económicos, sociales y, por cómo no mencionar, la pandemia que nos está afectando desde ya casi un año? Dinamarca ha sido pionera en la incorporación del diseño como un elemento central y estratégico de su desarrollo como sociedad. Es así como crearon uno de los primeros laboratorios de innovación pública en el gobierno y cuentan con el Danish Design Center que ayuda a promover a través de un enfoque de diseño la construcción de una, so de una mejor sociedad para el presente y el futuro. La experiencia del Danish Design Center permite ver de una manera concreta el poder que la colaboración y la articulación de diversos actores tiene cuando se diseña una sociedad orientada a través de los principios del diseño. En esta sesión estaremos con un gran invitado y un gran moderador. Nuestro invitado es Cristian Christian Bazón, eh, quien es el director ejecutivo del Danish Design Center y uno de los pioneros del movimiento global por la innovación pública y el diseño estratégico para la sociedad, quien ofrecerá esta clase magistral de la visión que tienen ellos desde el desde el centro de diseño y el valor de las personas eh, en el centro. Y quien nos moderará será Juan Felipe López, Juan Fe, ex director del Laboratorio de Innovación de Gobierno de Chile, uno de los fundadores, parte de la consultora UNIT de Diseño de Servicio y Diseño Estratégico, eh, gran socio del, de, del área este año. Eh, panelista también, ha estado conversando en distintas eh, instancias, así que entre expertos de innovación pública y, y eh, comenzaremos esta discusión muy necesaria en relación a la modernización del Estado y del trabajo colaborativo, sobre todo entendiendo que diseño ahora en el Ministerio está junto a, econom a Economías Creativas y que tenemos las puertas abiertas para comenzar a progresar. Y, poner el diseño en el centro del cambio. Así que, Juanfe, te dejo a ti la palabra. Muchas gracias, Trini. Hola, Cristian, y a las eh, personas que están hoy día conectadas eh, a través del Zoom y también a través de la plataforma de Facebook Live. Simplemente para que sepan, hay personas de 30 ciudades distintas conectadas, por nombrar algunas, tenemos Caracas, Concepción, Valdivia, Rancagua, Iquique, Lancaster, Lima, Madrid... Copia Po, Antofagasta, Cañete, Buenos Aires, Helsinki y Temuco. Nadie todavía de Copenhague, Cristian, eh, pero podrán todavía eh, llegar. Eh, yo tengo el honor de presentar a Cristian en su clase magistral, que la hemos titulado ¿Cómo básicamente los países pueden promover el crecimiento y la innovación sustentable a través del, del diseño? Y para que todos lo sepan, Cristian eh, es máster en ciencia política y tiene un PhD de la Copenhagen Business School. Eh, fue director del MindLab, el laboratorio que comentaba Trinidad entre los años 2007 y 2014, siendo una fuente de inspiración para muchos quienes hemos estado eh, dedicados a los temas de innovación en el sector público y de hecho Cristian jugó un rol central en los inicios de la construcción del laboratorio de gobierno en Chile, vino a Chile invitado por el gobierno también y por la Universidad de Chile, por el Centro de Sistemas Públicos en ese entonces, el 2014, estuvo toda una semana trabajando y ayudando a los equipos a poder ayudar a estructurar eh, la estrategia de innovación en el sector público. Ha escrito siete libros sobre diseño y innovación pública, donde destacan Living Public Sector Innovation, el 2010, Design for Policy, el 2014, y el más reciente, Living Public Design, del año 2017. 
es profesor en distintas universidades y fue presidente del Grupo Experto de Innovación en el Sector Público de la Comisión Europea en Europa. Actualmente es director ejecutivo del Danish Design Center y con quien tenemos un vínculo eh, formal a través de, de UNIT eh, para promover eh, las estrategias y los proyectos y las agendas de diseño tanto en América Latina como en Dinamarca. Así que eh, estamos muy, pero muy contentos de poder contar con Cristian en esta sesión. Y sin más... Eh, el piso es tuyo, Cristian, por 30 minutos y después yo iré recogiendo algunas preguntas del público que las pueden ir haciendo a través del de, eh, botón para hacer preguntas y respuestas. Adelante, Cristian. Thank you so much, uh, Juan Felipe. Truly a pleasure to, um, to be with you and I'll just uh, share my screen to uh, share a few ideas in this uh, masterclass on uh, the role that a design center can play. Uh, in uh, facilitating uh, innovation and growth in a uh, in a society. So I do hope you can see uh, the screen uh, now. Uh, so I've chosen to call it advancing design for Denmark and the world because that's actually what it's all about. It's this combination of um, working to uh, enhance uh, a society and its uh, competitiveness. Uh, but at the same time to be something uh, for for the world when it comes to uh, great design solutions um, there's a saying that danish design is a uh, is an old chair and in some ways we're still uh, fighting the image of uh, of denmark as the home of uh, amazing scandinavian modern furniture um, i do hope that most of you will know denmark for something else as well as a uh, well small welfare state in the in the nordics which is also leading, for example, in, uh, uh, in the healthcare and um, uh, life science. Uh, we are a leader in uh, uh, clean energy, uh, windmills, um, uh, in uh, energy, in uh, sustainable solutions, also in uh, water. And uh, we're also uh, an agricultural country with a very, very strong and huge uh, farming export. We even also a country that's been a seafaring nation since the Vikings. and. Uh, Uh, have a, a very, very progressive and uh, huge uh, trading fleet, amongst many other things. Uh, but this image uh, of design is on the one side what has given us a brand uh, in the space, also globally, but it's also something where we are working to, um, well, supplement the image to say that actually we are a society that is, uh, has embraced design at many, many levels from our built environment and architecture to the way we live and uh, Go about our everyday lives with a very high degree of uh, design sensibility and um, i think in many ways uh, when we talk about design here we talk about a, a design society and that we have a, a society that's in many ways a reflection of our design culture um, this is our home right now uh, it's called blocks and actually was designed by a dutch architect uh, but it's on the waterfront in copenhagen where we are part of this ecosystem around uh, where both the danish design center but also the danish Architecture Center uh, is located together with a whole ecosystem around uh, uh, architect and design and, uh, and technology, focusing on sustainability and the built environment. So this entire building complex is all about that, connecting uh, business uh, with uh, institutions like ours. Uh, we also have an office in Kolding, uh, this is from our opening this year, uh, in the western part of Denmark, and I think it's important to say that uh, as a national design center, you, you do want to work not just with the capital and with uh, uh, big cities, but you want to work across uh, the geography and be relevant and present uh, all in other parts of, uh, of your country. So here we have now uh, um, uh, two offices, one in the west and one in the east part of Denmark. So we've been working actually since 1978. We were funded uh, founded by the Um, design industry in Denmark by, by, by the Danish designers uh, together with uh, the Confederation of Industry uh, here in Denmark, so an alliance between designers and industry to advance the value of design both for business and for, for society at large. And uh, so we've been at, at this for more than 40 years, not the oldest uh, design center in the world, but among them. Um, And um, here's a bit of a timeline on, on our, uh, our growth and uh, relative decline some years back and then growth again to a point where we today have a, um, a budget of around 7 million euros. We have about 50 uh, staff, uh, staff that cross, cuts across people with backgrounds in design, backgrounds in uh, political science, economics, uh, business, 
uh, people with backgrounds in anthropology and in communications and technology. So quite a diverse team of about 50 people uh, in our two locations. And uh, even though we actually right now uh, developing a new strategy and, uh, and finalizing it hopefully by the end of the year for the center, uh, we say that we enable sustainable growth by design. And because we're funded by the uh, Ministry of Business in Denmark and co-funded also by many other uh, public institutions and foundations, you can say that we are in a, in a way embodying the official or governmental, um, at least part of the governmental approach to advancing design and take on a, in that way, a, a play an official role, even though we, we are a, by law an independent foundation. So the way we work, uh, what do we actually do? Uh, and again, I think this reflects how you as a, as a country or society uh, attempt to take a, a vision around what design can be and then uh, try to make it practical or, or operational. And we say that we uh, work to, uh, I mean, our foundation is to work to uh, leverage design for growth and for you know, branding of Denmark uh, and to solve uh, so social and societal challenges. So taking social or grand challenges for society at the center of what we do. And um, in particular right now, we are focusing quite a lot on, uh, on, uh, on the green transition and, uh, and climate change and uh, sustainability and circular economy. We're also quite heavily focusing on the future of digital uh, solutions and digitization and uh, what that means for companies and society. And we're concerned with uh, social and societal challenges could be around healthcare, could be around uh, welfare and caring. And so these are the three, you could say mega trends that we, we look into. And in many ways, they're not, as, we don't see them as separate, but actually very, very closely connected in terms of creating a more sustainable world. We then activate the resources of design and designers to do so. And uh, when we say activate, what we mean is that we uh, build and create uh, uh, programs, activities, uh, processes that uh, take a design approach, designers, uh, methodologies, tools, way of thinking, and bring that into processes that are experimental, that are about learning and about sharing. And so experiment, intervene, get something done, do something active uh, is, a, is a grounding principle for us. So rather than mostly being a think tank or knowledge center, we're actually quite activist in terms of uh, hands-on uh, programs and then extracting learning from that and sharing that learning. And those three sets of activities are what I've pushed my class around so you can get a sense of what are the ways in which we practically work with combining uh, societal challenges, uh, business challenges on the one side, public sector challenges with uh, the resources and capabilities uh, of designers. And this is kind of our way to uh, continually advance the value and power of design. So first goes uh, experiment. Uh, now that means uh, basically stimulating innovation and sustainable growth by design. And uh, when we say design and innovation or design as a empowering and enabling innovation, you might think that that's a, a new thing. Uh, but uh, when I came into the Danish Design Center, I took a look at the bookshelves and saw what we've been doing. And I came across this book. Uh, it's called uh, Innovation Via Design, uh, which is quite uh, sound modern sounding and uh, relevant today. Uh, this publication by the Danish Design Center is from uh, 1990. And so it's now more than uh, 30 years ago that uh, we published uh, books on innovation through design. Um, and, uh, but it took uh, almost as long for the Danish foreign ministry to discover that uh, design from Denmark is not just an, an, a chair, it's actually about innovation. So now they've actually made that into their way of, uh, of uh, articulating Danish design uh, uh, as a ministry. But, um, but it's, it's in that many ways not new. But uh, uh, that's, I think the role of the Science Center is to be in the forefront and cutting edge and identify what, what's coming. So how do we do that? Well, one thing we do, for example, is to work with the Ministry of Science uh, and their uh, innovation fund, which is the biggest uh, strategic fund for, a higher, uh, for research and development in Denmark, a state fund, where we run an incubator. And this is an incubator for startups where we bring uh, design uh, thinking and design tools and methods to uh, a 12 month uh, program where we take in uh, uh, young graduates from universities uh, all over Denmark, uh, also international ones uh, that are uh, studying in Denmark. And uh, we run a very comprehensive, intensive 12 month pro program where the um, startups get uh, a small uh, 
set of pocket money, they get a, a physical a space uh, to stay, and then they get a extremely intensive uh, mentoring and uh, coaching and training and introductions uh, to, to design thinking as a way to build a company. And uh, this has been running for the last few years, to three years, and is uh, extremely successful, uh, has been expanded and, and extended several times. And is in many ways um, an example of how you as a design center can, uh, can get very close to stimulating business innovation from a, from a very early stage startups. Uh, the program is called uh, Inu Founder uh, Graduate. Another example from an innovation program is uh, working with uh, 100 small and medium sized companies across Denmark, where we basically identify uh, very, very strong uh, design agencies and connect them uh, with, uh, with the companies, uh, in industrial companies, manufacturing companies, service industry companies, others that are seeking to uh, step into sort of digital transformation and don't know how to do it. So what we do there is really to create the match and we then uh, administer uh, public funding to give grants that make it uh, almost free uh, or with a small uh, payment to, uh, to access professional designers uh, from a company standpoint. Uh, actually, up, up until the COVID-19 hit, uh, we, we, there was a, a co-payment from the company side, uh, so I guess splits uh, funding. Uh, but with the coronavirus uh, and the need to restart the Danish economy, we actually made it uh, free for a, a business and enterprise to access design consultants. Uh, and the, the sprint methodology, the, the Google Sprint methodology has been at the heart of, of this program. So quite intensive short, short term um, processes where companies could uh, get to learn about design and then it could actually also build multiple sprints on top of that if they wanted to. A third example uh, is actually run and, and, and uh, sort of driven by uh, sustainability and um, and the uh, and uh, the uh, the global UN global goals uh, on on uh, transforming cities and uh, creating a, a world without waste. And so this is an innovation challenge we uh, we organized and ran, uh, funded and co cooperated with a, a big foundation in Denmark called uh, Real Dania. And uh, here they uh, they entered with us as a partner to uh, basically invite uh, up to I think we had 42 companies involved in creating systemic solutions to uh, designing out waste from a, a construction industry and so we basically supported a process of, towards these consortia or, and systemic solutions with uh, many companies working together on uh, on sustainable solutions uh, one of the uh, it sounds simple but one of the uh, winners of this innovation challenge they won a uh, 150,000 euros in a cash award was a company that has designed a very, very cool looking, well-designed shed. So a shed for like a secondary type building uh, made entirely out of uh, upcycled and reused materials. Uh, the company is called Neste. And uh, to do so, they had to create new types of relationships with uh, all the, the, uh, the whole value chain and, uh, and uh, all the circular chain around uh, building materials and getting them uh, repurposed and able to use for this uh, shed, as well as getting uh, buyers, so uh, so big organizations that run uh, um, uh, rental buildings across uh, Denmark to uh, to go in and uh, provide the opportunity to uh, to prototype and test and uh, uh, actually also sell the uh, the product. So this is another example of a of a innovation program. And the final example uh, these days, digital is also huge uh, in uh, in question of uh, ethics. This is in Danish, but just to say this is a program we're running on the future of ethical design. And where we see that uh, perhaps companies can make ethics in terms of uh, uh, privacy, in terms of uh, non-bias, in terms of uh, it, do not create evil algorithms, it could become a, a, a feature of competition for companies as they, they craft and design their digital products or digitally enabled products. Healthcare is also a big issue and, uh, and challenge. And uh, as was mentioned in the, in the pitch to the session, the masterclass today, um, Healthcare, of course, calls for great design, both in terms of service design for, for citizens and patients, but also in terms of uh, the future of uh, technology. And uh, here we ran a pretty comprehensive uh, project on the future of health uh, called Boxing Future Health, where we organized a process with uh, partners from both industry and from uh, academia uh, to look at different scenarios for the future of healthcare. So uh, different alternative uh, futures uh, by 2050, actually quite far into the future. And then uh, creating uh, human stories about those futures from the perspective of uh, patients. So this uh, design approach with empathy and insight into human beings. 
Um, there's some sound on that one as well. And then uh, creating uh, immersive experiences where people can actually explore what the future of healthcare might feel like uh, from a, a very sort of empathic and uh, human perspective. And then uh, workshopping and facilitating that. All of these projects and examples are really about taking a challenge uh, for society or business or both, and then uh, organizing and structuring a process where the design community can pitch in, where we demonstrate the power and value of design, where we then stimulate a new thinking and innovation and growth uh, for, uh, for the participant uh, companies. Learning is the other piece of our work. And again, uh, the main thing we do is the experimentation, but of course, no, no experiments without learning because that's where the point about extracting insights and learning is really important. And a big piece of what we do is basically to write up case studies and uh, draw out experiences from our experiments. Uh, but there's also uh, even more to that because we also need to uh, look at the data around the design field and create a transparency around what ha what's happening with design in Denmark. And we also need to look at learning as uh, not as, um, as uh, learning for us, uh, but as uh, providing learning for others. So uh, executive training and, uh, and learning for uh, enterprises, leaders, companies, and uh, public institutions, where we do quite a lot of executive training. So about learning and data, one is simply that we, every couple of years, we, we map out how do Danish companies work with design and do a very comprehensive study of that. And uh, for those of you working with uh, the, the business sector, you'd find it interesting that our study shows that 92% uh, of those companies that work strategically with design across their value chain and as a high priority, uh, also a capability in the company, they can measure the economic benefit uh, directly. And this is uh, quite a significant uh, figure, I think, which shows how uh, great design is a massive com competitive advantage for companies. Um, something else we do is we map uh, the design field. So who are the designers in our society? Uh, how many are there? Uh, what do they do? Uh, this is called the Nordic Design Resource. We mapped it out actually for all of the Nordic countries uh, where you can deep dive into the different individual countries. And we found that there are more than 50,000 designers in Denmark, uh, two thirds of whom have a formal education, but about one third are self-taught and come from other backgrounds, but still practice design. So we did a mapping that was not just based on the formal education, but based on what people actually do. For example, using uh, LinkedIn profiles and digital uh, scraping methodologies to uncover who are the actual designers. And we are then of course uh, also mapped uh, what are the disciplines in which they work. So we have an overview of uh, development and also comparison between countries on, on disciplines and design. So these are all about drawing data out from the design field and as a center to be uh, a knowledge platform that can provide that. Here's the images from training. So a lot of executive training with different actors. Uh, we do a lot of uh, field work when we do so uh, and engage people. This is working with uh, Danish uh, Lego bricks uh, to really um, say that part of our job often together with uh, guest lecturers and designers uh, is to simply provide high level uh, uh, executive training uh, to advance the, the role of design. We also run uh, networks among uh, design directors and leaders in companies so they can uh, create peer-to-peer -peer opportunities for learning and, uh, and advancing their practice. Finally on uh, sharing, uh, what, uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, it means uh, to engage the design ecosystem. We are one actor, but there are many, many actors in, in Denmark around the design field uh, that uh, we believe need to speak with each other, have transparency, collaborate and develop the field. We also need to uncover the values of design. And of course we have to celebrate uh, the difference great design can make. And uh, we do that also uh, very systematically. So on engaging and facilitating the national design ecosystem, this is all in Danish, but it's a, a slightly older a mapping of who are the actors. And you can see there's a finance, there's policy and regulation, there's design education and, and research, there's a, the professional design sector, there's a support programs. There's so many different uh, aspects or components of um, uh, the ecosystem and just keeping tabs of who's who and what are they doing is important. So we run a, a forum, a network called the Design Forum, where we host uh, by qu uh, qu quarterly meetings uh, of uh, all the design schools, the academies, the universities, uh, the design uh, bodies, uh, the industry associations, and so forth, membership organizations. So we uh, ensure that there's a conversation and we also highlight topics. We can develop policy together, policy ideas together, uh, surface uh, challenges and problems, uh, and so on. So that's one infrastructure role that we we have taken on 
Another one, I learned that uh, Chile has a design policy, a national design policy, uh, which is quite recent, and uh, uh, perhaps there's uh, work ongoing to uh, develop that further. In Denmark, we've uh, both had shifting design policies. The first one was 1997. Uh, the current one is really broader than design field itself. It's for creative industry, so across design and architecture and, uh, and uh, experience economy, uh, digital uh, experiences, and so on. Um, it's called the Growth Plan for Creative Industries, a Creative Denmark in Front. As you can see from the publication, our role there was to, of course, provide input, but also we actually facilitated uh, the expert group that was uh, uh, developing the policy and worked very closely with the Ministry of, uh, of Business, especially. But this was a, this was a cross-ministerial exercise, so it was uh, both a business ministry, uh, culture, higher education and research, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that together uh, we're hosting this process of policy development. And I think that's quite important that we bridge the um, different policy domains. So we get both the cultural and the creative side, we get the business and industry, and we also get science and higher education. And uh, that's also a role for the uh, global outlook and the uh, nation branding there. Another thing we do is uh, map the values in Denmark's design DNA. This might be interesting. If you ask the question, what is Chile's uh, uh, design values or design DNA. Uh, we found these 10 principles. I won't read all of them, but uh, social, human, holistic, high quality, and so forth, um, which was a mapping exercise of uncovering what characterizes uh, Danish uh, design traditions and legacy. Um, and uh, putting across all kinds of categories. I'll show you some Im images, but, but much more than, uh, than furniture, absolutely. Uh, but that might be valuable as an exercise. We did this in very close partnership with uh, several think tanks and the uh, Royal Academy of Design in Copenhagen and many others. Uh, so uh, what does social mean? Well, that's everything from how we create a beautiful uh, uh, harbor bath uh, that's highly well designed in the, in the clean uh, swimming water of Copenhagen Harbor to an app for, for helping blind people see and uh, solar powered light for the developing world. It can be how we've uh, crafted uh, a quite amazing uh, experience in the airport in Copenhagen to uh, uh, circular business models for children's fashion to uh, holistic, uh, pretty wild uh, interior design, or even to uh, a value like transformative. Uh, here you have both an image from my previous uh, work at MindLab at bottom, bottom right, the Danish government's innovation team, uh, policy, policy design, but also designing uh, in uh, the Danish prison and probation service. So how can you design that crime in, uh, uh, but in violence in a prison setting? And how can you transform uh, recycling and, and the circular economy, uh, which is the top picture from our uh, quite massive recycling system in Denmark? So these are just illustrations of the values in Danish design and what it looks like in practice, which has been a very helpful exercise for us to do. And uh, it's called uh, um, uh, designdna.dk is the website, happy to share it later. In conclusion, uh, we also celebrate uh, the uh, difference design can make in uh, running a national award, uh, where we also are, usually have both the Crown Prince of Denmark uh, present, we also have ministers and nice speeches and the red carpet and so on, but really celebrating the bandwidth of design across service design, industrial design and uh, everything in, in between. Um, and it only takes one Dane actually to uh, compete, which means uh, that if you are a Chilean designer or designer anywhere on the planet and you collaborate with a Danish company, uh, you can actually submit for the award. Or if you are a global company and you work with a Danish designer, you can also uh, submit for the award and submissions are open as we speak. That's an international jury and it's a really, really tough and difficult award to win but it doesn't cost you anything to submit and it doesn't cost anything to win it. Uh, we actually fund all of it. So uh, together with, with by the government. So um, that's uh, worth uh, highlighting. Uh, and I think celebrating the value of design and keeping that very fresh and uh, ongoing as an exercise is uh, really, really important for a national design policy as well. I think my time is, uh, is pretty much up. And uh, this was, I know, quite a, a lot of information uh, across these categories of how we experiment and we learn and we share around like, advancing the design. Uh, as I mentioned to Juan Felipe earlier today, um, I think that the future direction for us will be even more focusing on sustainability uh, and the biggest challenge probably of our generation to create a better planet and world for, for the next generations uh, in terms of addressing climate change and the green, uh, green uh, transition we need to go through. So I just wanted to highlight that as uh, something we're looking to uh, in the future. 
happy to take any questions and uh, comments you uh, you might have. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for listening to uh, to my presentation. Muchas gracias, Cristian, por por esta presentación, por y por situar tal vez la conversación en algo que ha sido particularmente relevante en este ciclo de conversaciones del mes del diseño, que es entender su valor, su valor social. Eh, y aquí me gustaría, hay, han llegado varias, varias preguntas y, y también hay preguntas de cuando las personas se registraron para, para, para esta charla tuya. Y, y si bien tú hiciste este este marco que tiene que ver con la experimentación, el aprendizaje y el compartir, digo, compartir slash celebrar. Eh, yo creo que aquí en Chile estamos en un, en un momento que es muy relevante, porque um, tú dijiste una frase que, um, que para nosotros acá es, cobra mucha importancia, y tú dijiste, el diseño no es nuevo, sí este nuevo rol, el nuevo rol es nuevo. Y, y yo creo que en Chile pasa algo similar guardando las proporciones y las características de sociedades muy distintas que están construidas también sobre valores distintos. Eh, y en ese sentido me gustaría tal vez la primera pregunta que está recogido acá de, de tres personas que la hicieron cuando se registraron. Eh, una cosa es experimentar, otra es aprender y la otra es celebrar. Pero muchas personas se preguntan acá en Chile... ¿Cómo se convencen? ¿Cómo uno persuade? ¿Cómo uno, cuando dice yo quiero poner al diseño en el valor social, ¿cuál fue la estrategia que ustedes en Dinamarca desarrollaron para que desde el punto de vista de los negocios, de las empresas, de, de, de la industria, se percibiera ese valor en el sentido de innovación, en el sentido estratégico, en el sentido de propósito social? Si podrías partir por una primera reflexión eh, en ese ámbito. Yeah, thanks for the, the question, and uh, I think we're all asking the same question. Societies are changing, and therefore design has to keep up and uh, and be part of that. On the other side, you can argue that design is what shapes society. It's the designers that have created the world we live in today, also the problems we have, and we need to design our way out of it. So as a general human activity of creation, innovation, and and uh, and change, uh, design is absolutely critical, and, uh, and that's probably been discovered more clearly the last decade or so than than when uh, my, my my colleagues wrote the innovation via design. Um, at the same time, I think as my 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 chairman said in a meeting I had with her this morning that you know it's noisy out there. There are so many voices and so many different uh, perspectives on the world that are, are shouting and struggling to come through. So it's it's a hard work to uh, make the case that design is where you ought to look uh, and where you ought to put your attention as a, as a, as a, in terms of policy or as a company. I think we have a, we're in a very, very interesting place right now because it's been so well documented, the, the value of design for business, right? By uh, Design Management Institute, by McKinsey's recent study on the business value of design. Uh, but of course, there is a point around metrics that you do need to show and demonstrate the value creation uh, quantitatively. You also have to demonstrate it in terms of case examples that demonstrate and show how design and designers are addressing uh, problems worth solving and problems that are both addressing human needs, uh, they're addressing uh, business opportunities, and they're also addressing the challenges of our planet. And here I think that um, case examples that are very concrete and tangible, either some that you can contribute to stimulating as we do sometimes, but also simply running award shows that show the best of the best, highly well curated, it can be pretty powerful. You have to tell the story and you have to tell the story and you have to keep doing it because it's, it is noisy out there, uh, but we are in a good place. And I think many, many companies today do know that design is critically important. Many public sector organizations understand the value of design. So maybe it's not a question of just selling it, but involving and engaging partners in working with it and advancing the practice. Y, y en ese sentido, Cristian, ¿cuál dirías tú de todas estas narrativas, de, de estas historias que hay que contar, eh, en las cuales el diseño ha jugado un rol relevante? ¿Cuál dirías tú que son esos atributos del diseño que lo hacen único en su poder transformador, que es absolutamente distintivo de otros enfoques, de otras aproximaciones? Yeah. 
Yeah, so so that's uh, of course what we always ask ourselves, and in in some ways, uh, I spoke with the dean of uh, one of the design schools in Denmark. I was uh, g giving a, a keynote together with her uh, uh, in another part of the country, uh, actually actually traveling and being outside of the country in a in a hotel, which is very strange for once. Um, but we very quickly agreed that design is pretty much the only professional practice we have in the world which is uh, about creation of something. Uh, so all the other professional disciplines are more or less around other things like analysis, uh, like uh, scientific uh, discovery uh, or, um, or about or, or technology led, but design is a holistic integrated discipline that is about taking any other knowledge field you can imagine and integrating into something that uh, makes sense and works for people and creates value. And that is a space actually that's unique to design. And then the way designers do that is through uh, a human centered uh, approach to understanding uh, problems and, and behavior and uh, context. It is through visualization, uh, using uh, uh, visual tools and graphics. It is through involvement and engagement. And it's first and foremost through giving form uh, through uh, iterative experimentation, prototyping, and so on, by giving form and shape to a solution, whether it's digital, whether it's uh, uh, physical, or whether it's uh, uh, more abstract like a system or, or a business model. But that is the uniqueness of designers to go through those processes. And they, in a, in a way, design is the field that can, the only field that can claim that space. Um, and that's what makes it so incredibly important and fascinating and uh, something that uh, governments uh, and businesses need to invest in. Y en, y en ese sentido, Cristian, eh, ¿cuánto rol tiene la madurez que tiene un ecosistema o una sociedad respecto de la percepción del diseño para poder dar este paso, para que efectivamente eh, esto cada vez empiece más a ser la norma que la anomalía o el outlier? Eh, en Chile efectivamente se han dado pasos importantes, o sea, lo que ha pasado en el sector público es importante, lo que viene haciendo el Ministerio de Cultura, con la política, el laboratorio de gobierno hace un tiempo, eh, también desde uh -huh. la industria han habido buenos, buenos casos, pero eh, ¿tiene, ¿incide la madurez de la discusión o, o basta solamente que se empuje el tema y eso mismo va a ir generando la madurez? Me gustaría una reflexión ahí al, al respecto. Well, it, it matters. I mean, it, it does matter, of course, but, but I think several things. I mean, one thing is there's always such a thing as leapfrogging, right? That you can, you can uh, with, with advanced actors like yourselves and others in, in uh, and I mean, when I visited Chile some years ago, I was deeply impressed by, uh, by the quality of the thinking and the people and the ambition of the country and the resources that were there, the human resources as well. And so I think that you don't want to let the maturity, you could say, of the ecosystem, whether it's uh, the, the level of design schools and academic research, or it is uh, uh, how many policy uh, actors actually understand and take an interest, uh, necessarily limits uh, how far you can go in terms of vision and in terms of uh, doing something uh, concretely. But I do think there's a role for someone to play. And that's where I think design centers can play a unique role is to actually empower the ecosystem, build it up, uh, contribute to its development, articulate needs, connect. I mean, we say, see ourselves as a bridge builder in many ways, connecting the dots. Um, we, um, we are such, such a good actor, uh, or at least we are an actor between policy makers and, uh, and foundations and so on, that people uh, tend to forget that we do so much with uh, co concrete work with businesses as we do. Right now we are working with 440 companies in practice, uh, but still I have uh, board members that think we mostly do uh, policy work or connecting uh, the different stakeholders, you know. So, so I think it's a question of, of, of working on those different levels and maturing the system. And uh, there, are, uh, what I shared with you today is really about some of the um, angles or entry points you can use to, to do so. Uh, but uh, but every country is different, and uh, there's actually a lot of great research in Europe as well on how you can actually advance design ecosystems uh, that we're also building on. Acuerdo. Hay una pregunta de Javier Guillot desde Bogotá, Colombia, eh, que le llamó mucho la atención esto que tú comentabas de este indicador de, de los diseñadores que no necesariamente son los que tienen el título de diseñador. 
eh, de hecho tú eres cientista político eh, y, y si bien no estudiaste diseño, has dedicado toda tu carrera profesional al diseño. Eh, al menos acá en Latinoamérica hay mucho recelo también la, al tema de las profesiones, o sea, esto de que eh, si tú estudiaste algo tienes que dedicarte a eso porque tu voz autorizada está solo en ese campo, ¿sí? Entonces, me gustaría que, que pudieses profundizar un poco en, este, en esta iniciativa que tienes, pero no tanto en la iniciativa concreta del, del Danish Design Center, sino que mm. desde el mm. punto de vista mm. de, de esta mezcla que existe eh, entre las distintas disciplinas y, yeah. y la, la autoridad para poder hablar de diseño y que todos podamos ser diseñadores en ese sentido. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the one aspect, of course, is that that to design is a is a innate human ability. And if you watch kids playing with Lego bricks and uh, imagine full out their imagination, they they also do conduct acts of design, right? So the act of designing is something everyone engages in. The question is whether they do it any any good or not. Uh, it's human seniors written a great book on uh, on uh, democratizing design and diffuse diffuse design as what we all can do. But of course, the question is, what is professional design or, or what is the actual design resource? So what we did in Denmark was to say, let's imagine, first of all, which educations in Denmark actually educate designers. Now, I, uh, I did take a, I did write a PhD in design, uh, but it was at a business school. So, so I, I do not call myself a designer in spite of that. But there are people who are actually um, educated at business schools, at schools of uh, technical universities, Uh, at the schools of uh, um, culture, for example, that uh, have taken so many courses and so much uh, content that is in design that they can call themselves uh, designers. And so what we did was we said, well, if you have some of those educations, you are also a designer, just like you are if you uh, graduate from the Royal Academy of Design or from one of the other certified uh, artistic-based design schools. So I think one is to recognize that design is a broad field and you have some art-based design schools, and then you have design within technical universities, you have it within, within business schools, and we actually took the fractions of those or took those departments, right? And then there's the question of the one third I mentioned, which is self-trained, self-studied. And this is to say that in Denmark, design is not a protected title. So you, anyone can in principle call themselves a designer, but how much does it take to do so? And here we looked at um, people who on LinkedIn, for example, had their CVs and their uh, professional backgrounds and who would call themselves designer uh, by way of, uh, of uh, offerings in terms of as a professional. And we also looked at, of course, not people who are just uh, self-employed, but people who are employed within companies. And we came to this number, which of course is a rough estimate. But I think the basic point is that you can, of course, in a professional career, if you're trained as an anthropologist, sociologist, even a political scientist, become uh, so professional in what you do, you could call yourself a, a design a practitioner, uh, even though you don't have a formal degree. And I think that's important to say, and that goes for other disciplines as well, of course, but this is what we did. And uh, again, it's online, the whole uh, study in English, you can check it out, nordicdesignresource.com. Ya estamos, queda un minuto, Cristian, y hay una pregunta que la hizo Gerardo Pérez que, que quiero tomar algo de lo que dice ahí. Eh, eh, se ha estado discutiendo en último tiempo la, tal vez la necesidad en Chile de crear un, un centro de diseño, justamente que haga de puente eh, entre distintos sectores para promover una mejor sociedad. ¿Cuál sería tu, tu mensaje y reflexión final respecto a esto y con esto cerramos también y aquí me callo y aprovecho de agradecerte sí. también tu participación well thanks for that last question I, I, I think um, if you don't have a design center as a country uh, you're going to have to invent one and uh, I think the reason is that this, this bridge building uh, and advancing of design for the good of society across both business and citizens and the public sector and the civic sector is just critically important. And the bridge spanning and the, and the acting as a neutral platform where actors can get together is just even more important in a world where problems are getting more complex, uh, where a pace of change is incredibly fast and where both businesses, but also other actors need to, uh, to you know, create better and faster, great design to address those problems. So uh, I would say, um, let me know. I'm happy to uh, work with you to uh, provide input and ideas for how it's, it's possible. But I, I do think that, that well-run design centers are worthwhile. Look at Singapore, Norway, UK, Denmark. We, uh, in all humility, we think it's, uh, it's worthwhile. 
Bueno, pierde cuidado, Cristian, que te vamos a pedir ayuda, eh, tal vez más temprano de lo que tú crees, eh, así que seguramente vamos a seguir en, en contacto y en colaboración. Así que con esto nos despedimos, te agradecemos muchísimo eh, por tu visión y por ayudar también a provocarnos desde otras miradas y, y, y poniendo en valor estos temas que muchas veces de repente cuesta eh, considerarlo en su dimensión más estratégica pensando al país. Así que a nombre aquí de las personas que están conectadas, tanto por Zoom como por el Facebook Live, Muchísimas gracias, gracias por participar de este mes del diseño y estaremos en contacto. Muchas gracias a todos los que se conectaron y sigan ahí las actividades en mesdeldiseño.cl. Muchas gracias a todos. Hasta luego. Buenas tardes. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you, Juan Felipe. Take care. Chao.